Hello and welcome to today's broadcast of Unique Online Television. With a broadcast all the way from the headquarter town of the Western Area Rural Districts, na Sierra Leone, West Africa. And uh, we we'll meet you at any time we we feel say we need for update you. And uh, yourself get your responsibility for contact we for anything we would like for make all and Sierra Leone know about. You can contact we on any of the numbers in our screen or the email address we they see. You can contact we they and tell you about your workshop, your advertisement. We have to make the world and the Sierra Leone know. You can contact we and we can do them for you at a better pace and we can do them professionally. Um, inside today's program, we can look at something else we possibly you might not the hear about, but you know aware of them, or you don't aware of them, but you don't know about them. We can look at what we call prosthetic. Prosthetic na a body part we not to God make them, but a motorman and designer for making work for motorman so that motorman go use them. And uh, possibly you don't hear about them or you don't see them by picture. But um, you go take your time and watch this video, make you see the one that within the use prosthetic limb, how did they use them in sports. And uh, just watch this video and possibly you can understand exactly what in at the Cantok Box. So the world record 2303. You'll notice with these athletes that some of them take a little bit of time to wind up, and once they get going, they absolutely fly down the last 100 meters. It's Richard Whitehead out in front who leads in tandem. Malango of South Africa, the world record holder. It's Whitehead who leads at the moment. Malango's bidding him down. It's Malango who's going to take it. Malango goes past Whitehead. And he wins in a time of 23.59 seconds. Well, Richard Whitehead was looking very strong until he got to about 50 metres to go. And that man there, Ntando Malengu, picks up a Paralympic gold medal. As you don't watch the video we don't play so. Now refer to as prosthetic limb. So this, we get one university or one institute, we then at Cambridge, we don't call MIT, we don't get this project. We now, boku boku million dollar we involved in this. We then they can produce uh, prosthetic limb and arm for cigarettes and way the war been don't affect. We then they now they not get food or uh, they not get their hand. We then be don't cut during the war. And uh, the institute when our MIT then get for say this to the BBC and listen to what in then say to the BBC about the project and Uda and Uda will benefit from this project. In Sierra Leone, where thousands of people suffered forced amputations during an 11-year civil war that finally ended in 2002. The government of the West African nation has given the go-ahead to a project run by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. Costing several million dollars, it's a four-year initiative providing assessment, training and delivery of the latest prosthetic limb technology. And it'll provide a mobile clinic able to reach patients and manufacture artificial limbs in rural areas of Sierra Leone. And I've been speaking to two of the key people from MIT who are in charge. MIT. Hi, my name is Francesca Riccio Ackerman. I'm the graduate student lead for the MIT program to strike. Great need for artificial limbs and braces is Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone had a vicious civil war where many, many people in extraordinary atrocities lost limbs from the rebel forces. So there's now tens of thousands of people in the country that have major limb loss without the use of prosthetic devices. Can you explain further about what you're doing? Our approach we call SITE, it's an acronym, S-I-T-E. That stands for Supply Chain Infrastructure Technology and Education. We believe by expanding upon all those fundamental pillars that only then can one introduce sustainable, comprehensive change within the country of Syria. For orthotic and prosthetic care, these are the type of doctors that treat the patients and, and know how to fabricate the braces and the prosthetic limbs and take care of those patients that have that type of disability. And you see the ulti from that in reality. We're in a phase one, which is four years. Uh, we have a proposed phase two, which is three years. And after that phase two period, we will have expanded national capacity for delivering bracing and prostheses to about a thousand treatments per year. Inside another story, we'll go look at religion. And uh, in the world at large, we get different religion than way we they observe in the world. And uh, we get different life way we all they live. Some man they live social life, some man they live religious life, 
Some of them live economic life. But you go look at one key religion in the world we then call Islam. In Islam, they get what they call the five pillars of Islam. And one of them pillars in the, they call a Hajj. And Hajj now, one of the responsibilities of Muslims them all over the world, where the Islam permits them for doam at least once in everybody in lifetime. And you will get the opportunity. And this year, not to any other exception, as people them all over the world come out and go, and go do Hajj now, Saudi Arabia. And according to reports we come out, about 1.8 million people then we come out all over the world for go do Hajj inside Saudi Arabia. And uh, including when 1.6 million we come out from abroad. In total, now 1.8 million people then approximately we go for go do Hajj inside Saudi. Uh, but 1.6 we then feel see come out out of Saudi, we come out abroad. And Sierra Leone, not to any exception about that. And uh, in Sierra Leone, we get about 609 people then we don't come out from Sierra Leone, we then go do Hajj this year in uh, Saudi. But what thing happen? Most of the one them we can go Hajj, not can get correct document. And because you not get correct document, you know get the privileges we the Hajj get. For example, you know get a better accommodation, say you get AC or you get a uh, First aid in case if you don't or in case anything happened to you, you know, get them. And because of that, this year the report say over 1,000 people them we don't die inside this year's age we happen in Saudi Arabia. And country them we involved, we they don't arrest some people them, we take people and go to the Mecca with uh, where they, where they don't get correct documents, we then go Mecca. Now, one of the country them is take it time and listen to it in BBC Pulnado about this country here. The authorities in Jordan say they've detained several travel agents and individuals who facilitated the unofficial travel of Muslim pilgrims to Saudi Arabia. Unregistered pilgrims don't have access to proper facilities at ritual sites, such as air-conditioned tents, hotels or first aid kits. Several countries have confirmed the deaths of their citizens during the annual Hajj to Mecca as temperatures rose above 50 degrees Celsius. Unconfirmed reports suggest total deaths may exceed 1,000. That's now the updates we, we get for you today from Unique Online Television. And uh, we'll meet you at any time. We'll feel so for updates you. And if you say get issues, we if you say you want to make a look at, you can contact me in either via email or via our telephone number them and give me a story we go like for me to look at so that we will make the world and Sierra Leone at large go know about what you want for me to talk about. Me, where they make this program, they meet you every day. My name now Mustafa Fofana. Thank you very much. Make, make sure see, you subscribe if this is your first time for watch and tap on the notification bell so that you'll get a notification for any time we do an update on any issue we, we look at. Till we meet again, bye-bye.